Hi grade one and two students, um, today we're going to watch um, a video that I think is very interesting. Um, it is an orchestra performing Peter and the Wolf, which is a pretty famous piece of music. Um, it's performed by the Vancouver Symphony Orchestra from Canada. And I'll just tell you a little bit um, about this piece of music before the, the video starts. It was made, originally written 84 years ago, so in 1936. So it's from a pretty long time ago. It was written by a Russian composer called Prokofiev. And he was, someone asked him to write this um, for the Moscow Children's Theatre. So it was actually written for children. Um, small children, like children about grade one, grade two age, um, as an introduction to the instruments of the orchestra. So instead of the, the, the musicians just playing the instruments and just making music, the different instruments represent different characters in the story. So the flute is um, the bird, the oboe is the duck, the clarinet is the cat and the bassoon is the grandfather. So all of those are um, woodwind instruments. So they're all instruments that you blow air into and they have like a nice kind of woody kind of sound to them. So you, um, you'll see those in a moment when the, he okay, he's called the narrator, the person that's talking throughout the story is the narrator. The narrator will introduce you to these. Um, then the wolf which is one of the main characters, is performed by the French horns. So French horns are these big brass instruments. They look a bit like trumpets. Um, you have to put your hand inside the French horn to adjust the pitch perfectly to make it. So it's an unusual instrument like that. And then Peter, who's the main character in the story, he's represented by the strings. So the strings is all, all of the violins. So there's about 24 violins in the orchestra and then violas, and then cellos, and then um, the double bass, the contrabass. So all of all the strings are all of the instruments that you play with a bow like that, okay? So there's the violins that you play like that, the violas, which are just violins that are a tiny bit bigger, and then the cellos, which you play like this, but you play like they're very big and you go between your legs, and then the really big ones, the big double bass. So all of those are the instruments that are, um, that represent Peter and he's got his own little song. The wolf has his own little song too. So the characters have their own little songs throughout this. Um, the last thing that they've got in there as well is the, the timpani. So timpani are these huge drums that you can control the notes with your feet and they're um, to representing the, the gun. So the rifle in the story. Um, Apparently Prokofiev, he wrote this in one week. So he only, it only took him one week to write this. And yeah, but it's a, it's a very famous, well, you might actually recognize um, the main melody, the melody that um, is Peter's melody. The whole video goes for quite a while, goes for probably just under half an hour. So it's not too long, it's not that short either. Um, if you've got any questions about it, um, send me an email. Um, but I think next week I'll probably just, I'll sing a song with you, something like that. But I, th I th thought for this week we might do something different. Um, you can pretend that you're at the concert watching because it's all, you can see all of the instruments up close and it all looks really good. Um, I really hope that you enjoy Peter and the Wolf because I used to really like this when I was little too. So here it is, here's the video for Peter and the Wolf. Enjoy. Each character in this story is represented by a different instrument. The bird by the flute. The duck by the oboe. The cat by the clarinet. The grandfather by the bassoon. The wolf 
is represented by three hideous, nasty, ugly, smelly French horns. <laughs> Peter is represented by the strings of the orchestra. And the rifle shots are represented by the timpani and the big bass drum. And so, if you're sitting comfortably and you're all relaxed, we can begin. Once upon a time, Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow. branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped the bird gaily. Just then, a duck came waddling around. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. Seeing the duck, the little bird flew down upon the grass, 
settled next to her and shrugged his shoulders. What kind of bird are you if you can't fly, he said. The duck replied, what kind of bird are you if you can't swim and dived into the pond? and argued, the duck swimming in the pond, the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's eye. He saw a cat crawling through the long grass. The cat thought, but the bird is busy arguing. I'll just grab him. Stealthily, she crept towards him on her velvet paws. out said Peter and the bird immediately flew up into the tree while the duck quacked angrily tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Grandfather came out. <laughs> he was angry because Peter had gone out into the meadow. It is a very dangerous place. He said, if a wolf should come out of the forest, what would you do? But Peter paid no attention to his grandfather's words. Boys like him are not afraid of wolves. But 
but grandfather took Peter by the hand. He locked the gate and he led him home. Sooner had Peter left the forest than a big grey wolf did come into the meadow. In a twinkling, the cat climbed up the tree. The duck quacked, but in her excitement, she jumped out of the pond. But no matter how fast the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. It was getting nearer and nearer, catching up with her. And then he got her, and with one gulp, swallowed her. And now, this is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch. The bird on another. Too close to the cat. And the wolf walked round and round the tree, looking up at them with greedy eyes.
Peter stood behind the closed gate without the slightest fear, watching all that was going on. He ran home, got a strong rope, and climbed the big stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter lightly climbed over onto the tree. Peter said to the bird, fly down and circle around the wolf's head, only please take care that he doesn't catch you. The bird almost touched the wolf's head with his wings while the wolf snapped angrily at him from this side and that. wanted to catch him. But the bird was cleverer than the wolf, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter carefully made a lasso and letting it down. Feeling himself caught, the wolf struggled wildly, trying to get loose. Jumping only made the rope around his tail tighter and tighter. Just then. The hunters came out of the woods. Following the wolf's 
trail and shooting as they went. Peter sitting in the tree said, don't, don't, don't shoot. Birdie and I have caught the wolf. Now help us take him to the zoo. Peter at the head. After Peter, the hunters leading the wolf. procession, Grandfather and the cat. Grandfather tossed his head discontentedly. Well, and if Peter had near caught the wolf, what then?
the flu little birdie. Chirping merrily. My, what brave fellows we are, Peter and I. Look what we have caught. Listen very carefully. You can hear the duck quacking inside the wolf. Because the wolf, in his hurry, had swallowed her.